So welcome everyone uh, this evening. So my name is Bharat. I am your uh, presenter today. I uh, currently I am working as senior data scientist at Salesforce Data Bank. Okay. So this is some of our work with uh, Vasudeva um, uh, and few other folks who did this work. Okay. So this today's topic is about topic modeling uh, on consumer financial production bureau data and approach using bird-based embeddings. Okay. Um, so this work we presented uh, in an IEEE conference and it got accepted last year. Okay, and this is the paper. If you want, you can explore it. I can paste a link of the paper also if you're interested. Um, so basically today, basically our goal is I wanted to make it a bit more of a research uh, uh, purpose. Okay, a research paper exploration. Okay, so I will walk you through the, the motivation and background, like why we took this approach, right? Uh, what is the problem statement? What are our aims and um, objectives? What is our methodology, right? Uh, some results and discussions, um, conclusions and recommendations, okay? Um, coming to the motivation and background, right? So basically the background is we did this analysis on a uh, financial consumer production data. So I hope by now most people know what is topic modeling. Topic modeling is nothing but extracting topics out of the free text okay so what is free text suppose there is some text available so you wanted to know every text has something it is trying to convey some meaning right there is some top topic it is uh, trying to express uh, right so whether it's a fine uh, the topic can be anything yeah it can be about business topics sports movies arts history or anything right um uh, yeah i would uh, give you the link to the research paper as well okay so the topic can be anything so if uh, in such case, right, when your topic is anything, right, and you wanted to um, explore, right, uh, what are the topics from without any labeling data? So basically, I hope by, everyone knows now uh, what is a supervised model, unsupervised model. Okay, a supervised model is something uh, where we have labeled data. Um, uh, suppose, for example, you wanted to say this text belongs to sports. This, this text belongs to uh, some movies, this text belongs to something, right? So that is a supervised model. So you, uh, right? So when you have some, something already labeled, right? And then uh, you, when new text comes and based and you train a model, you can classify any new text based on the mo uh, already the model you uh, uh, did it on a uh, supervised data. So that becomes a supervised data model. So basically topic modeling is an unsupervised model. I hope everyone understand, um, yeah, right? What is unsupervised model? Because we don't have labels here. The idea and the task is to extract the labels from the top, uh, text, uh, given text, okay? So this is a very, very, um, uh, this is not a very trivial task, right? But a great deal of amount of work has been done over the past two decades, starting from LDA, which is a very uh, revolutionary method to the current BERT-based approach, okay? So this is a um, uh, right unsupervised model, and there is no guarantee that uh, if your topics are really uh, uh, well separated, well distinguished, right? So often you need some domain knowledge. So who provides that domain knowledge, right? So probably you are a data scientist, right? You uh, you say that these topics are good, but someone needs to validate that uh, topics. So you can only compare two different models whether this is good or this is bad, but there is no 100% right or wrong or something that says that these are the perfect topics this text contains. And often it becomes very cumbersome when you have huge amount of text, but you can get some kind of feedback from the domain uh, experts who are related, right, in your company or in your industry or in your academia, who can give you some guidance about the quality of the topics that you extracted from the uh, uh, from the text, okay? So the, the motivation here is to create an intelligent NLP solution for finance organization, right? To atom, automatically assign the complaints received by the consumers to the subject matter experts, right? So, and thereby reduce the response time and also save the manual efforts of the customer service professionals, right? So imagine you uh, on a chart or something, you send, it, um, you send uh, a message or a text, something, it says that you have a problem regarding the uh, tally of your account or something like that, or you have some other um, uh, so, some other uh, problem that you are facing and you wanted to get it resolved, right? So that that particular thing that your particular concern should be addressed by a subject matter expert 
pertaining to that particular domain, right? So in a financial organization like a bank or like a, like a trading organization or like a financial or like Fidelity or Vanguard or these kind of organizations, right? So every complaints, uh, complaints needs to be handled by different um, set of people, right? Who handle various uh, uh, brand, uh, domains, right? So it is very important for the topics to be diverted to that particular domain. So, uh, in, and manually, it is very, uh, it is impossible, almost impossible to do that manually because you receive number of complaints and uh, this becomes a very cumbersome task even to route manually as well. So can we have an intelligent solution, right? Uh, to uh, label them and once you label them, right? You can train a model. Once you train a model, next time you can automatically uh, label these solutions belongs to this thing. Uh, you can do a uh, certain domain expert, right? So the problem statement here is uh, the, to find out the best topic modeling technique to create the topics from complaints, uh, complaints text data, right? This text data is publicly available, okay? Um, the text data is publicly available of financial organizations, right? This is a consumer financial protection bureau uh, publicly available text data. And to find a way to prioritize, prioritize the complaints to save the organization from reputational loss, right? So the more uh, responsive the organization is towards its customers, the better it is serving the customers, right? And in a, in a, in a, in a competitive world like this, it is very important to be serving your customers uh, very uh, responsively, right? So our objective one, right? So first of all, uh, our objective one is uh, in a research, uh, you need to have some objectives. So first our objective is to investigate the utility and performance of uh, existing word embedding techniques, right? So for example, uh, I, I really hope that you guys know what is an embedding by now. Uh, embedding is nothing but a, a representation of a word in, in an n-dimensional space, right? So for example, uh, you train a large unsupervised language model, right? And for example, there is a word called a king or a queen or anything. And each word you are representing in an n-dimensional space. That n-dimensional space is nothing but a 32 dimension or 64 dimension or 256 dimension or generally even and multiplied by eight because of the GPU uh, processing, okay? It's, right? So you're representing a word in an n-dimensional space, right? And um, the, the two, if two words are closer, that means two words are very related. And you can check if two words are closer by simple uh, cosine similarity. So now we wanted to see traditionally in a statistical way, we have topic modeling techniques like um, LSA and LDA, right? Latent semantic um, uh, LSA and also LDA, latent dirtlet, uh, right? LDA, right? Which is um, uh, very fa two famous and conventional models, right? <laughs> so we wanted to explore the current uh, transformer based embeddings, which are nothing but uh, like BERT, Robota, and Distilbert, which are nothing but the BERT variations trained uh, to make um, uh, are trained. Uh, to make sure that we have a smaller language model, right? And versus FinBert is nothing but a BERT trained on financial text, right? So we wanted to compare these four BERT-based models with, uh, with LSA and LDA, and we wanted to see the quality of the topics, okay? So these are the two objectives we wanted to uh, serve, right? So the data set we have is, is a CSV file, uh, right? Uh, which is directly downloaded from CFPB official website, all right? Uh, as I told you, CFPB is uh, Consumer Finance Protection Bureau, right? Um, and uh, the data identified for this study is an open source data. Um, uh, data set has columns like company, product, state, uh, date of complaint, right? Because the, uh, 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 along with the consumer complaint narrative, basically the, uh, and a text of column, okay? So this consumer complaint narrative is the column on which we are doing the analysis, okay? So this is a quantitative study which evaluates performance of different topic models on uh, financial text data. So for example, this is a sample data set you can see that. So this is one of the consumer complaint narrative, okay? <clears throat> so uh, you can see PayPal Resolution Center ignore their own policies is one complaint, right? So you can see that uh, because um, you can see that some of the uh, data is already masked because that can reveal personal information. So you can see that uh, some of the information regarding the account names or complaint number, these are already masked. So anything with XX17 is something like a date or something, right? Uh, uh, right. So these are pertaining to these uh, complaint, uh, right? So as to protect the uh, pro to protect the consumer uh, in personal in privacy information, they mask already this kind of uh, data. So this is not a huge uh, problem for our thing. So I hope everyone is um, <coughs> clear with the data. 
So the research methodology is uh, basically we wanted to first do LDA and LSCA, okay? And uh, these topics are produced based on uh, word frequency, right? So basically, you know, so basically LDA and LSA both are based on word frequency. So you wanted to associate the frequency distribution of a word uh, uh, based on, these are, these are probabilistic models, right? So, uh, and you can see that these fails to work on large purposes, they have sparsity issues. So that is one of the main problem. And it also ignores the order of words, right? So one, this is one of the main problem. It ignores the order, order of words because hence, semantic relationship between the words is not captured. So that is the main problem, right? For example, uh, if you say uh, something like um, bank and banking can be two different words, right? So it doesn't capture the relationship between these two words are being the same, right? For example, in your, in your topic, uh, in your text, if you make a complaint with some spelling errors, that can also lead to, of course, you can do uh, lemmatization, stemming, that still destroys the some of the word, right? So if there is a spelling mistake or anything like that, it, it starts to see it as a two different words. And also it, it fails to capture the semantic relations between various words. So these are the basic drawbacks of LDA and LSA, right? But whereas embedded space models, like vector-based models, right? The topics are extracted by grouping the similar meaning of words together, right? And these works effectively are large corpus. And the last important thing is it consists the order of the words and captures the semantic relationship between the words. So before getting into the diving or getting into the data or, or, or results or anything, it is very important for us. Um, uh, it's very important for us to uh, analyze the data, right? This is called as exploratory data analysis. So if you can just see this, right? So you can see that um, you can see that mostly uh, if you just see the number of complaints, right? company-wise complaints. So, so we have a company column and you can see that most are related to credit reporting agencies, right? So 40% of the data is credit reporting agencies. And most of the complaints regarding credit reporting is probably there is you or someone has already paid the bill, but it's still so not paid or something like that, right? That severely affects their credit score. So 40% of the complaints are regarding credit reporting agencies, right? Um, right, and these three are only bet uh, between Equifax and you can see that TransUnion and uh, some other company, right? So that is the uh, main thing. And, and also you can see that 40 points, right? Under first take, these companies are basically uh, credit reporting agencies. And the second analysis is you can see that, right? Um, uh, you can also see a simple uh, time uh, series based analysis. Like uh, you, can, you already have a date column in your data and you can see that uh, uh, when and how many complaints you have received, right? So this is the complaint numbers. You are just uh, accumulating all the complaint numbers for each uh, day. And you can see that um, overall the complaints trend is increasing, right? This shows that uh, overall for various factors since 2015, the complaints are um, increasing. And you can see that there is a, a spike in, somehow there is a spike in probably 2017 and in uh, between 2017 and 18. Uh, not sure what uh, caused that particular spike. Uh, maybe th there is some uh, Equifax data leakage or something like that. I'm not, really not sure. But uh, if you just do a, a moving average kind of thing, you can see that uh, certainly you can see that uh, the complaints are increasing. So it's very important uh, for us to, um, uh, and for us to, uh, for most of the companies, right? So top, top, uh, these complaints are increasing and they need to take these complaints very seriously. So analysis, right? So for text cleaning, uh, we remove the white spaces and we did say the complaining text using regular expression. Uh, we use uh, punctuation from the text is cleaned using string replace function. And we, we inbuilt the stop words from NLTK library and right. And we did the tokenization, especially we did the tokenization for, uh, these, um, what you call as for LDA and LSA methods, right? The text is initially converted to lowercase using a lower function. And this text is lemmatized, which means the converting the words to its root forms, right? Because um, stemming, uh, right? Uh, so converting the words to root form is a good, uh, best, better method than stemming itself. And uh, we explore the complaint text to find out number of words, characters, hashtags, uh, stop words, native words within that text before converting them to token. So coming to the research methodology, right? So basically what we did was we did the data, right? Uh, collected the data and then we did the data cleaning. 
all right basic data cleaning as i mentioned uh, as in the previous slide and uh, we did the topic modeling and evaluation right so this topic modeling and evaluation contains two steps one is non transformer based and transformer based right and non transformer based um, are the ones um, uh, the ones that I'm talking about, where you use FinBird, the, uh, the transformer models trained on, uh, all right, uh, bird-based transformer models uh, for getting the word-wise uh, vector vectorial representation, and uh, right, uh, and also non-transform methods such as LD and LSA, uh, because you always have to, um, how did uh, right, <coughs> uh, yeah, so. We, I, I will like, uh, ask you, uh, I will check, get back to your question, uh, Pradeep, anomalies. I, I just need to know, Pradeep, what is the anomaly you meant, okay? So we use two metrics to compare, right? One is CV metric, uh, right? Basically, it measures the intercluster distance, which means that it signifies the distance between two clusters and it should be maximum for the ideal model, right? So if the two clusters are separated well, that means your topics are well separated. Okay, and U mass metric versus the representation the intra cluster distance within the cluster, right? So, for example, um, you have within the cluster you have some uh, data points, right? So, within the cluster, your data points are uh, should be very close, which means that it represents the distance between two topics within the cluster, and it should be minimum for the ideal model, right? So, your CV should be maximum, and U mass should be minimum. So, these are the two metrics we evaluated. Apart from the qualitative analysis as well. So the research methodology is like this. As I, uh, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we use two methods. Uh, one is for transformer-based models and one is for uh, non-transformer-based models. Um, a spike in number of complaints in particular. So um, we, we didn't do, uh, I mean, of course, um, we, since this is unsupervised analysis, we don't need to do any anomaly detection. And, and uh, we didn't take the complete data for our analysis. I, if I remember correctly, I think we took, uh, I think last 365 days or two year data, something to do the analysis, okay? So, uh, because even this uh, uh, sample data, which we were extracting from la last one or two years, uh, we had some compute, uh, compute problems. That's why we restricted ourselves to um, a few years. We didn't take the entire data because the entire data is very, very huge. I hope I answered your question. But it's a very good question. So the top architecture, right? The methodology is for um, probabilistic based models. Like we take the tokenized complaint sentences. Basically, we do all the data pre-processing, like lemmatization, removal of stop words, and all these things, right? So basically, we tokenize and we do lemmatization and we remove stop words, and and then we apply TFIDF method to get the weightage of each word in each topic, right? And we apply LSA and IDA and we extract the topics. So the bottom architecture is about the bird topic. So this is uh, <coughs> this is a, a library created by uh, Martin Gordonhost. Um, I would introduce this library to you as well uh, once the talk is done, um, and you can visit the library to know more about how it performs. So here, as you guys all know. Uh, for transformer-based models, you should uh, right. Uh, you don't need to do any data pre-processing because um, the transformer-based models understands the sequence relationship between words, punctuation marks, and uh, all these things, right? So it is. Um, uh, you should not apply any pre-processing methods on when you are applying a transformer-based models. So that's why we do, we took untokenized complaint sentences and we uh, so this is the bird topic um, um, package a library built by martin gordon host uh, so here the first step is to you vectorize this uh, right and uh, you vectorize each uh, topic right uh, each text right each uh, each topic means what i meant is each um, uh, complaint right so for this since you wanted to extract the n dimensional representation of at the, at a complaint level you use sentence transformer right so you use sentence transformer Again, uh, right, uh, and these sentence transformers can be derived from a bird, distilled bird, fin bird, right, uh, <coughs> and robot. And once you do sentence, apply sentence transformers, right, you can, but see, at the end, you have to reduce the dimension, right, because these, uh, these have a dimension of, I think, uh, based on the model 512 or 256 or something, right? So each complaint uh, you are projecting in a n dimensional space of 256 dimensions, let's say, for example, right? To uh, I mean uh, right you are you, you are reducing the dimensions using UMAP right because uh, <clears throat> that is for the reasons of 
uh, that is for the reasons of making it more uh, easy for you to manage and understand and visualize, right? So you can use UMAP or TSNE, but for some reasons, UMAP is a better method because TSNE requires more compute, okay? Uh, TSNE uh, stands for uh, T, uh, Stochastic Neighborhood Embedding Met Models. Uh, UMAP is a different uh, model, which is also which also works on non-linear uh, dimension reduction method. Uh, I think most of the beginner, uh, you guys know that uh, PCA is principal component analysis is one of the uh, linear dimension reduction method. So on, on the other hand, UMAP and TSNE <coughs> are the non-linear dimension reduction methods, right? So you, your data need not be in a linear fashion, right? So even if these apply in a non-linear fashion. So you, you apply UMAP, right? You reduce the dimension. So this is one of the hyperparameter you can control. And you do clustering, right? You get, uh, and when you're doing clustering, um, you can choose HTB scan uh, for the clustering. Uh, you can do encoder, but that is not available uh, you here in this package, right? Uh, you only have UMAP for the dimension reductions. Okay. So once you have HTB scan, uh, you get CTFIDF for the importance of the words, right? And then you get you generate the topics here. Okay, uh, Samiksha, it's a very good question. So encoder is not available in this package. So now, as I told you, uh, CV and metric and UMass metric are the two metrics we did. So now let's see the results, how we got. So you can see that LSA topics are mostly like, uh, these are the topics we got. Uh, debt collection, mortgage loans, disputed and inquiries, service fee and credit reports. So we don't get these topics directly. Uh, we still have to um, combine because uh, actually what we get is some the, some of the words present in one topic, right? I, I hope if anyone knows about topic, right? So these topics, when you combine with your domain knowledge, you, uh, you can assign a topic at a very higher level. Actually, you get only words. So for LDA, you get mostly about auto loan, mortgage loan, uh, account charge off, uh, account reporting, fraud, debt collection, late fee payment, credit card reporting. As I said before, 40% of the topics are about um, credit reporting agencies, right? So, and all these issues are mostly about credit reporting. If you just take a look at it, credit reporting, right? Credit card reporting, uh, right? So all these late fee payment, credit card reporting, uh, uh, account reporting, loan, all these are related to the credit, uh, loan and reporting agencies, right? Uh, this is actually this entire thesis. Is this top, this entire research is a thesis done by uh, Vasudeva. Uh, if you want, uh, I can show you the raw results as well. But for now, I would just show you these high level results. So now in this, you can see this topic modeling. So this is these are the results generated by the purely bird based models, right? So now you can see that. <clears throat> So this is the cluster diagram, interdistance, intertopic distance map. So now you can see that you can uh, you can see that these topics, how most of these uh, each um, each thing represents one cluster, and you can see that most of the thing represents the bankruptcy and fraud. So we have to still so these topics foreclosure and this doesn't come out naturally. You have to give a label based on the. Uh, based on the words that come out of these topics, okay? So these are the topics you get from a bird-based model, right? And if you see, uh, this is the topic name. We we assign the topic name, delayed and re-raised comp complaints cluster, right? So some of the major words in this cluster, right? For example, uh, in this uh, uh, delayed and re-raised, right? For example, this particular cluster where I'm pointing my mouse here, Auto pay, e loan statement, banker, panache day, and alert and tape, right? So our, our the the person who is doing this research or thesis, um, right, is a financial uh, domain expert. So he labeled these topics as delayed and re-raised com uh, complaints. Okay, and the second topic is about e banking. So uh, this is all about um, payment judgments. These are the major words he used, right? So then the third topic is about auto pay, right? So now you can see that auto pay, sometimes you you, uh, you are not able to set up an auto pay or your auto pay is not activated. So you can say that auto pay, card holders, roll, auto track, all, all are regarded to auto pay collection, right? So 
then the fourth topic is about delinquent debt collection. Delinquent debt collection is someone is not able to pay their loan and after 60 days, uh, 90 days, if you are unable to pay your in uh, installment, then your account goes to a delinquency. So, <coughs> so when your account goes to delinquency, then they do recovery and all that stuff. So that is why this has very related words like delinquency, debt, recovery, collection, discrepancy, major. Right. So all these are related to delinquent debt collection. The fifth topic is about foreclosure. Foreclosure is about, so if you're not able to pay, if someone takes a home loan and not able to pay their loan for more than three months, right? Then the uh, the bank or the financial institution which provided the loan tries to uh, retake the property from the uh, from the uh, loanee, right? So that is called foreclosure. So foreclosure, income, value, preserve, equity, deed, specialist, right? So all this stuff. So then uh, there is a rude customer support, right? So for example, you try to call, make a call and you have uh, someone gets harassed, dialer, you dial, you rude, uh, there is a rude talk, email, recipient plot, right? So all these points are the rude customer support. So, and then uh, frankly, the last 10th one is um, sadly bankruptcy, cheated, scam, game, all these are bankruptcy and fraud. So you can see why, I, why we uh, highlighted these two, uh, uh, these two in bold are, because uh, these are the two unique uh, topics that we got from bird-based model, right? So here we are comparing bird versus um, Finbird versus um, Roberta versus Tishil bird, right? So next I would walk through you through the Finbird, right? So now if you just see, you can see that just I'm scrolling through bird and Finbird, you can see that Finbird has many more topics. Is this obvious and clear to everyone? You see, right? So Finbird has more top, uh, more topics, and also more well separated, right? So now, uh, so these are the topics that Finbird got. So now you can see that some of the, uh, 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 some of the, it got some very unique uh, topics such as FCRA, FTPA. Of course, you have FTB and FTC, right? Um, uh, these are some financial uh, uh, jargon, okay? And cash net issues, right? Uh, again, uh, de uh, delete, discharge, duplicate disclosures, right? Something like glitches, violations, and all these things. So it has a very unique way of why? Because this BERT model is not trained on all the corpus. Yeah, it is on the same text. It is on the same text. Okay. So this BERT model is uh, the embeddings that you get from this BERT model are trained on a financial corpus. That's why you get very specific, uh, very unique topics here. Okay. And this is distilled BERT. Right, so you can see that. Uh, see, this is, for example, this is one cluster. This is one cluster. You can see that within the cluster, um, these are. Uh, see, for example, within this cluster, you can see there's a very, very close, and you have a lot of topics. This is one cluster. This is one cluster. But here, digital bird is also good in the sense that um, in, in the problem with digital bird is it's a, inter intra cluster distance is uh, a bit high. Right, and it also gives some uh, different types of um, topics. Okay, so again, uh, these are the topics that you get from the uh, digital bird. Okay, and digital bird is a model. Uh, it's a lightweight model. Uh, it doesn't have a huge. Uh, it, it, the number of parameters for digital bird are very very less. Similarly, the robot as well. Right, as the name says, bird. When you have a distilled model, you have a digital bird model. Okay. So if you see, Roberta is not doing well because you can see that it didn't identify many topics. Probably you can see this is one topic, this is one topic, this is one topic, a third five, right? So uh, this clustering figure itself reveals that Roberta is not doing that great, right? And these are the five topics what we got, okay? And you can see that bonus reward points is <laughs> surprisingly uh, no other topic, uh, no other model discovered this topic. Uh, right, bonus reward points. Uh, identification theft is like a fraud thing. It's already there. So this is probably fraud. It already identified. But uh, foreign funding, FCRI, FMI, and these are the regular ones. Right. right? So what does this point out? So now, uh, now we have to compare apples to apples by putting everything on one frame. What are the topics each, uh, each model extracted uh, from this? So now you can see that. Uh, so if there is a unique topic. Right, so we are putting it in a unique column here, right? So for example, uh, you can see that um, uh, delinquent debt collection is same as collections here, right? So only BERT and FinBERT extracted these two topics, right? Again, e-banking and e-banking or digital fraud, uh, these two extracted. So now if you see the um, uh, auto pay, auto pay only BERT extracted, 
But here, if you see that Finbert extracted uh, all these five topics. So one in one is related to specifically related to TransUnion, FTB, FTC, credit reporting. All these five unique topics and also uh, right are reported by Finbert. Right, and also the number of topics it uh, uh, coverage. Right, for example, it is mostly able to cover all the topics that most other models is able to cover, and also it reported some unique topics. That is why we can see that Finbert, uh, because uh, the domain knowledge. Right, so the model, uh, the BERT model that is trained on financial corpus is a better model to use, and overall these models are better than your LDA and LSA. Right, so now when you compare the the CV, right? Uh, the CV and UMass metric, you can see that. So LSA and LDA, uh, so the uh, CV is high, is the higher it is better. So now you can see that Finbert has a CV of 0 0.33, right? Uh, better than even the BERT model, all right? Not, not huge, not huge difference, uh, but still it's all uh, better than the, Finbert, uh, the BERT and even LSA and LDA, right? Uh, at the same time, UMass, uh, right, which is uh, supposed to be uh, uh, as low as possible. Even here, uh, you can see that uh, Finbert is a, a better model, right? So the, your intercluster distance, uh, uh, intercluster distance, okay. Um, should, uh, so right, on both the metrics, Finbert is a better model. So here you can analyze quantitatively, and this kind of analysis shows you a qualitative analysis. So it is very important, right? Uh, sometimes quantitatively quantitatively you may get better results but qualitatively they may not translate to the, what you want so both ways when we analyze uh, what we see is uh, right our basically our uh, count, uh, our inferences are, are at a two, uh, two uh, we got two kinds of inferences one is your bert based models so if you just put these bert based models are having a better metrics quantitatively and also qualitatively and within the bert based models so if you have to rank on a on a on their basis, right? So you can see that Finbert is the better model, followed by Bert, followed by Distilbert, and followed by um, uh, Roberta, right? So so these are the uh, findings from this, okay? Um, and it, Finbert is able to identify more topics, as you can see here, right? And it also is able to identify common topics from uh, other models and also some unique topics as well, right? So so the conclusions are right. So based on our experience and review of relevant literature, right? So legacy standard topic uh, models cannot capture the importance of context, right? As these algorithms ignore the order of words, but sentence-based transformers capture the importance of the word or of text and capture the context, okay? So this is the take home message, which I wanted to um, uh, give it to you guys today, okay? And the second conclusion is that so by comparing, uh, by doing a quantitative analysis with which, with a certain kind of, uh, with a with a, some degree of certainty, you you can say that uh, by comparing your UMass and CV metric, BERT uh, transformer-based models are better than non-transformer-based topic models, right? Uh, in capturing the context and topics with acceptable intercluster distance and intracluster distance. And the third thing is, out of transformer-based more embedding space topic models, FinBird works better on financial data, right? Because it has trained on a do uh, domain, uh, same domain purpose. So FinBird demonstrated good intercluster and intercluster bonding, and it also able to identify um, unique topics in finance when compared to uh, other pre-trained birds, okay? So the feature scope, what you can do? So uh, bird topic package uses UMAP distance reduction techniques, right? To improve the efficiency of UMAP, uh, UMAP can be replaced with various auto encoders. Um, someone asked a question here about auto encoders, right? So who is that guy who asked uh, about? Uh, uh, we also have yeah, so Samiksha Kolhe uh, suggested that can we use a um, yeah <coughs> auto encoder uh, technique. Right. So yes, we can use auto encoder techniques. I think they are part of the package. And uh, recently, a uh, very latest version of the package has already been released. Right. So you can use um, uh, also encoders. You can try different encoders and see. And also, uh, you can play with the dimension reduction. Right. So as I told you, uh, you can reduce to 20, 30, 50 as a hyperparameter tuning. Right. So you can again you have to do the same aspect uh, by comparing. Right. And the recommendation too is you need to find a way automatically assign the new complaints to one of these clusters. So now uh, we, we, we can bucket these complaints and in one of these topics and you can uh, train a supervised model 
right? And then you can see how your model is performing at a supervised level. The third thing is, <clears throat> uh, there is some kind of time order and out of memory, right? So yeah, for example, someone asked, uh, yeah, we used only 2016 data, one year data. We couldn't use the entire data. Uh, that can be work to handle complete data sets, which would be beneficial in the uh, future studies. Okay. So we used only one year data because we have some compute issues, but if you can handle um, using uh, a cluster computer, cloud computer, or AWS credits, if you have something, you can handle at a higher level as well. Okay. Uh, you can handle on the whole data. Right. So these are some of the recommendations. Okay. Uh, and um, you can also do some work on uh, recently on. Uh, how the topics change over the period of time, right? So that is also an important research aspect that is being actively pursued everywhere. So you can also um, pursue this topic uh, later as well, okay? So how the topics change, right? So um, it's just, this is, I, I can show you, this is a very good package on this as well. So this is one future thing if you want to explore. So this is uh, basically uh, about, our, um, about the topic that uh, I wanted to discuss today. And uh, some of the things I wanted to introduce. So this is our paper. Um, I would give you the paper link. Someone asked for the tape paper link. Let me copy this and get you the paper link. So this paper is freely available on ARXAV and you can, uh, I'll give you both the links, right? So I will give you the original IEEP link as well as the ARXAV link as well. And uh, if anyone is interested to, if anyone is in uh, code, we didn't open source, I'm try, I'll, try, I'll try to put it as well. Uh, if anyone is interested, we can um, pursue uh, extending this topic, uh, right? I can, I'm a TC supervisor for upgrad as well. I have, so far I have guided 50 students. If anyone is interested, we can uh, pursue this topic. If anyone is a master's level student who is already pursuing NLP or something like that. And, um, so this is a nice uh, uh, topic extension topic, right? We can pursue as well, okay? So uh, ping me uh, <coughs> later on LinkedIn or connect with me. Um, so this is our paper, okay? Coming back to the bird topic package. So this is the bird topic package, okay? So now you can see that um, it does vectorize on basic, based on a CTF IDF, okay? And on, uh, online count vectorize as well, okay? Okay, I did. I, did I not share it to everyone? Okay, let me share the paper links and everyone. I think by default I shared only to the moderator. Let me share it to everyone. So this is the board topic package. Okay. Uh, so now you can see that the architecture, uh, everything. This package is open source. You can use it. Right. So these are some of the uh, uh, hyperparameters you can uh, tune here. So now you can see that. Um, uh, where is that uh, various things, right? So now if you just see it, I just wanted to show API, both of the vectorizers, backends, so yeah. So now if you want, you can have a cluster. So how many topics you want to reduce? There are a lot of things you can explore, right? So this is, I just wanted to, introduce. this is a great package. And by the way, if anyone is starting in data science, the person who created um, this top, uh, this entire package is a, uh, is not a real, I mean, he's not a trained data scientist, but um, out of some curiosity, he created this package and it got uh, quite popularized recently, right? You can see that it has 3.5K stars and uh, 449 uh, <coughs> mergings, right? Um, so everything is here. So you can have uh, uh, term scores, topics per class, and there are ways to do it. You can do some plotting as well, some documents, right? So one of the main problem is it has, sometimes it takes a lot of time, uh, right? So this, you can get this kind of um, colored <coughs> topics as well, right? So this is the package I wanted to uh, introduce you, which we used for our uh, analysis, okay? Um, and um, yeah, any questions I would like to take? So yeah, let me start. Uh, what is BERT-based analysis? So BERT is a transformer-based model where, um, so Mayan, uh, I think BERT, I, I'll just show you, I'll answer lively all these questions. So BERT uh, is, you can see that. Um, so you can, if you want, you can see what is BERT and uh, I will just post you some of the links here so that uh, you can check this. So it is a transformer-based uh, language model where uh, it is trained on unsupervised task where you can you get a better representation of the word in an n-dimensional space. Okay, <clears throat> and how are uh, financial compensation available? Yes, it's a publicly 
available data set. So probably I think you can search for uh, CFPB data. You should get it uh, freely. Yeah. See, you can download the data as well, right? Get data, download the complaint data. It's, it's very easy. I'll share you this link as well. If anyone wants to use for your thesis or anywhere, I hope you're getting my links, whichever I'm sharing. Can anyone come from? And um, did you also use the lower non-numeric kind of basic text cleaning for bird? No, for bird, we didn't do uh, Ashwan. Uh, for bird, we didn't do any uh, data cleaning because it's not required. Uh, what advice will you give college students get into data science and uh, machine learning? So, so, so data science is a very um, a a rapidly changing field. So, uh, I mean, I would say that you need to have a strong uh, computer science and uh, statistical fundamentals. Acquire those fundamentals and come uh, get into getting um, that knowledge and uh, th um, things in data science is not too hard. But you need to put some extra effort because the field is changing very rapidly. The kind of advancements that are happening uh, uh, are happening at a very rapid phase. So you cannot catch up everything. First of all, you have to think that you, you the, the fundamentals need to be strong. Everyone is everyone is looking for only fundamentals. No one is looking for extraordinary things. So if you have those fundamentals, you can start as a data analyst or you can acquire some skills and then slowly you can have a build your own repository. You can repertoire and your own skills. So this is the suggestion I give. With software and commands, we have to write instead of Python. Uh, Fatima, I didn't understand your question exactly. Instead of Python, I mean, uh, so with software and commands, we have to write instead of Python? No, we use everything in Python itself. So, uh, can, so can you please give us some examples about how various industries use topic modeling, uh, uh, topic modeling to drive the business? So uh, use case of it. So it depends, right? So it depends on mostly um, every industry is trying to understand talk, whether you call it a topic or aspect. Recently, also we did some analysis on weak supervised learning with respect to aspect. Right. So if anyone dealing with the text-based complaints, right. So everyone is trying to give some reviews. So if someone is giving review, what is that review is about? They are happy about price. They are happy about uh, the quality. Are they happy about the customer service? So you need to know. So there is a second level of higher level research where. Uh, the sentiment associated with aspect. So that is the higher uh, second level of research that is everyone is actually pursuing. Okay. Yes. So yeah, it's a question from uh, for sentiment analysis, topic modeling in this. For sentiment analysis, you don't need topic modeling, as I said, Prasika. Uh, for if you are assigning a, a sentiment for a particular aspect, as I told you, are you happy about price? Are you unhappy about um, quality? Which one you are unhappy about? Probably you, you might be okay with the price but you're not happy about quality. So there is a sentiment associated with both the things. So associating sentiment with an aspect is an important research area. Is dimension reductions used to reduce the sentence that have been transformed? Is it right to say that UMAP does feature reduction? Yes, UMAP does feature reduction, exactly. Can it be used for context, context aware sentiment analysis? No, sentiment analysis, again, uh, uh, you, you, there, is a there are a whole lot of different approaches for sentiment analysis. Um, how to test if data is linear though through EDO or package? Most data is non-linear that you can take 90%. Many instances data, you never find data in a linear model in any way, unless and until in ideal cases, most data is non-linear. Post vectorization, one of the reasons we are not using PC is the data may not be linear. Can I explain how do we know whether data is, so, so I mean, see, you see, if you are, if you have PCA, right? So basically if you do PCA, um, your, your component should be separate or separable linear. Right. So, for example, if you take iris data, right, uh, iris PCA. So, if you see iris PCA, I'll just point out to, um, right. So, if it is linear, right, if you just check this figure, right. So, for any linear, if you, you should be able to, for any linear data, you should be able to draw a line like this and separate the data. So, if you can draw a line like this and separate the data, then that's a linear method. That is why K means is a linear uh, linear clustering method, right? So whereas HDB scan HDB scan is a nonlinear dimension uh, nonlinear clustering method, right? So what does that mean? Linear clustering and nonlinear clustering. I'm going into a completely different topic, but this is a very important thing that everyone needs to be aware of. For example, I'll just point out to clustering uh, this thing. So see. So this is a k-means clustering where you can separate by just a line. A line is nothing but a linear. This is a linear line. You can separate. But for example, um, yeah, 
this is a wonderful picture uh, from scikit learn itself right so now uh, if you have two circles like this can you separate by k means k means always separates by a line it just draw a line like this you can see that but it is not a drawing a circle to separate so that is the drawback of a k means that's why uh, we for db scan why db scan is able to separate these two clusters like this this is called non linear separation whereas k means fails that is why in our in our uh, topic modeling uh, in our topic modeling we are using htb scan uh, that's why uh, martin got a host went with htb scan high dimensional db scan because uh, this is a non linear uh, uh, clustering uh, method okay i hope this makes you some kind of clear okay so k means is only works for linear when your data is already linearly separable right that's why you can easily separate right so wherever you can see when your data see k means works good in this when you can separate like nicely like this but it fails here it fails here it even fails here as well only so but it, it, it is very perfect here right it's very perfect here so that is why uh, k means is uh, linear uh, separable uh, clustering method uh again coming back to i'm starting uh, mukesh i'm please do you have examples of notebook i'll try to share this so those are with my uh, with whatsapp i asked him to share it but uh, see it doesn't matter you have the package available publicly for free and there are umpteen number of articles on it so you can get the code for free and everywhere a lot of people have done a lot of analysis on using this package that can be a very good starting point for you i'm start uh, okay i'm starting out of an nlp should get hold over classical nlp is required is classical nlp is quite required uh, yeah 1.5 years you can learn your classical nlp as well how to label data especially for training the model is a very good question so one of the uh, topic i am actually consuming is uh, weak supervision so weak supervision uh, please learn about weak supervision um, if you are wanted to know uh, about uh, right snorkel is a very good package i we did some research and i'm uh, planning to publish couple of papers on a week supervision so this is a place where you need to learn about if you want to label your topics okay so this is something called week supervision please learn about week supervision uh, if you want to learn about labeling your topics i hope i answered uh, what about you map did you implement we used a packet api uh, this is my answer to marcela lisco Uh, how to label data is answered. How to label data for training that's answered. Uh, do you combine segment analysis of topics model? We didn't do it here, but I did it in a separate analysis, uh, right? Um, uh, can you please throw some light on how we can do context-based segment analysis? So that is a bit out of topic here. Probably uh, I will do one more session on context-based segment analysis. Um, there, there, there is one context-based uh, segment uh, analysis I did. Um, let me check probably i think you can check it here i have one more session did it on wood in uh, looking for the session i did or i can post it when i get it I'm not able to see it but i would uh, i can share that to you later yeah labeling is the biggest challenge i told you right so semi supervision uh, look into some of these methods semi supervision right this is uh, introduction to semi supervision Uh, for data labeling you should look into these research methods semi pseudo labeling semi supervision uh, there's a very good blog from analytics vijay itself so this is one you can uh, check it um, and the second thing is uh, as i told you weak supervision right <coughs> so uh, this you can check it this is from stanford ai research recently they established a new company called snorkel so this is where you can learn from uh, i hope uh, i'm posting this in the chat itself it's because it's easy for you but i hope everyone can take these questions uh, as a masters data analyst student with lots of uh, college colleagues but no practical data science experience uh, where do you start in the industry um this is a very um, subjective question so um i would say where do you start in the in how do you start in this i would take it that so to keep your fundamental see this is you always need to be a t based expert so have some experience on uh, nlp uh, your computer science knowledge how to do basic data visualization data analysis so i would say um as a so even before you guys you jump into nlp or computer vision my experience is try to get good at tableau data modeling 
right? Earlier, people used to get recruited for having data science knowledge for uh, if you build a model. Building a model is very easy these days. Uh, building a model is very easy these days, but you should, um, uh, what you should know is how to productionize that model, how to put it into an API. These are the skills that everyone is uh, looking for you, okay? And how to analyze, how to, so model training is easy these days. You need to retrain the model. Um, that is more important, right? So how to retrain the model, when to retrain the model, how is your model, how are you monitoring the model metrics are becoming these days. And did you also, I think, I think all the questions has been answered from my level, right? Yeah. Yeah. Any, any other questions, guys? I hope um, this is a uh, introductory talk uh, for you to get excited about uh, some of the current, uh, um, some of the current recent advancements in NLP space uh, in the unsupervised level. All right. Thank you very much for joining this session. I hope you guys had a great um, evening. Uh, uh, nice talking to you guys. Uh, uh, very uh, interesting questions, but uh, keep uh, learning. Uh, that's the only way you can get your knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot.